Terry five seven gave me another set of ten questions to answer, and I know he thinks that, or I think he thinks I forgot about the other ones, but I didn't. I wrote them down and started planning them out. I just haven't put everything together again. This is from a long time ago, and then here's the ten questions that he asked me now. So I'm going to answer these first because it'll be a little bit faster. Kim Townsley here. Welcome to welcome back to my channel, and this is a response video to ten questions that Terry five seven Real Fitness asked me. And let's get started. The first question, he asked me if I could create a class that didn't already exist for, uh, I'm assuming he meant for like high school students, what would it be? And I teach family consumer science, which is full of practical skills, and I teach my students baking, which is applied math, applied science, applied art, and applied reading. But I think something that's probably missing from um, most secondary schools is just a personal awareness, a personal defense class, and... I'm going to seek instructor training on Refuse to Be a Victim through the NRA. I'm going to do that in February, and I'm probably going to offer at very low prices or for free just seminars to help people um, just not do some silly things that we do that make us look like we could be victims for criminals. There's just bad people out there, and we need to know how to avoid them. So that's one thing. The second question he asked me, do I want to use, or do I use a revolver or semi-automatic for self-protection? I'm, I'm not one of those that thinks that people need to like show all your cards, like if you're playing poker. I don't post pictures of everything that I have. I don't tell people about all the skills that I have. I don't think that's wise. I don't, it's, it's nobody else's business. So let's just say I have a lot of resources and I will not hesitate to use them if myself, my loved ones, or our property is threatened. I started off using a revolver because it was easy and I could um, do that with a lot of training. And then I graduated to um, semi-automatic and went and got proper training through the NRA and tactical response, talent defense, um, hurt defense solutions, lots of other places. And I encourage people, if they're going to carry a tool of protection, to... Um, get proper training and, and be safe with it. I do love my SIG P320 though and my NSR holster. Have I ever tried proactive? I haven't tried proactive but I did purchase it from my son and he had great success with it with a proactive when he was a teenager. Let me show you what I use. This is actually what I use on my face. I don't have anything fancy and my skin's pretty bad but I use the St. Ives Acne Control apricot scrub every morning in the shower. I have a video up about that. And then I have, this is the best thing I've ever used on my face. I also have a video up about this, the Tazerac. And I've had this one since 2015. My insurance no longer pays for this. So I'm very, being very, very careful to not use more of this up. I had the gel, but just a little tiny bit. I mean, I'm telling you just a little tiny bit has been the best thing ever for my skin. And I don't really know what I'm going to do when this runs out because this stuff is like four or five, six hundred dollars a tube. Yeah. How old is my washing machine? Uh, I think I bought it in 2004 when I moved back here from L.A. And it lasted until 2018, so I can't really complain about that. But I have all these videos up about my washing machine experience, which has not been satisfactory to my expectations. But you know what? It is what it is. This is my new washing machine. It's a GE. I got it at Lowe's. It has way too many bells and whistles on it. There's absolutely no need for a washing machine to have like all this. And this was the plainest version I could find. You can just watch my video about washing machines to see what else I think about this washing machine. I'll link those here. If I remember or at the end of this video. Or you can just do a search on my channel for washing machines and you can see what I'm talking about. How would I help a third grader understand math? I think one of the best ways to uh, help uh, young, young children understand math is practical applications. I actually have one of my favorite lessons is called Kids in the Kitchen and having kids learn measurements, ratios, proportions, um, math and things like that while they're in the kitchen cooking is just an excellent way for them to learn that because they immediately apply it and they can see if they messed up. Um, young kids tend not to think, if you believe the educational theories, they don't think in the abstract. They can't like say something in their head and then apply it to a, to a situation over here. They have to actually learn it while they're doing it. So that hands-on, the hands-on thing is just key. And um, 
doing it and ending up with something that you have as a craft or something that you can eat or give someone else to eat is a little more a little bit more motivation than possibly playing with some of the man manipulatives that schools have. I don't know. If a student's not understanding algebra, is there a way that I could help him? Well, when I was a when I was a little kid, my grandfather was a genius and he taught algebra. And I would go get his algebra textbooks and look at those and think, how can you have math with letters of the alphabet in it? And it scared me to death. I was terrified of algebra before I was even out of elementary school. Just terrified of it. I would go get those books and look at them thinking that if I just keep reading them, eventually it's going to sink in. It never did. I got my first C, my first C that I can remember in ninth grade algebra, and I was devastated. I was devastated. And what I actually ended up doing for algebra was I would look at the answer at the end of the book, because the end of the book had the answers to every other, every other problem. And I would work on those and say, okay, this is where I'm supposed to go, and then work backwards to see if I could figure out the how-to. And strangely enough, that was the same way I learned how to read a pattern. My mom had me sewing from the time I was like third and fourth grade, but I never could understand the pattern instructions because I didn't know why they were telling me what they were telling me to do. Finally, I started reading the pattern instructions backwards. I would look and say, okay, this is what it's supposed to look like. This is what I just did. Why am I doing that? Oh, okay, I see why I'm doing that because this is this is the end result. So I'm one of those that had to, to work it backwards, and I think m maybe some other... Students need to do that as well. Um, there's just more than one way to solve a problem, right? On the powerlifting, he asks, is there a technique to execute a lift um, or is it strength all, the, all that you need to uh, execute a lift? Well, I think there is a strategy. Like, I am a sumo deadlifter because I have extremely long arms and... I do sumo so I can like put my feet far apart and then my arms are closer to the bottom so I don't have to really lift the weight that much. That's why the deadlifting is just easier for me. For someone else who has a different body style, it's, it's going to be different. So your technique, your stance is going to dictate um, all, all that kind of stuff. When I'm doing my squats, a lot of people stand with their feet really close together. And some people believe, and I believe this for a long time too, that you, you um, do three, you uh, find your place by taking three steps, but I do body squats almost every night unless I'm feeling bad. That's how I know if I'm sick. But I do body squats every night, and what I've learned is if I do five steps, that's actually what's taking me to, to feel comfortable, to get my um, knees, my hips, my feet where I want them to be. So I'm going to put those two wasted steps in when I start squatting again to, to see if it really does help. And I was taught to... Um, focus on heels down and knees out and when I did that squatting was squatting has always been super 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 hard for me and so I've done some more research and learned about um starting strength and Mark Ripito's hip drive and is focusing on uh this thing called butt wink or um the bounce at the bottom and instead of focusing on the feet and the knees and it has been much much easier for me so I'm excited to, to try that in 2019. Plus, I'm getting into a new gym that actually um, supports powerlifting. So I'm really, really excited about getting stronger again in 2019. In 2018, I was in a different gym and I just um, lost like 10 pounds, which I've gained back, and f competed in a lower weight class because I couldn't really focus on uh, getting stronger. So, so, so the type of gym I was in dictated those types of goals. He asked, competing in powerlifting, how many days do you train to get ready for an event? Well, let me show you my book. How many days a week do I train? This was my training log from 2017, and I tried to go in, like, if I'm actively training, I try to get in the gym at least three times a week, but I write it in here if I do, if I don't. And I get really serious because I normally compete in October. So I get really serious about 10 weeks before, and I actually, like, code it week one, week two. So you can tell I went one, two, three, four, three, to uh, three times well, four times, and then I did yoga, and then that week I only went that. So I do keep up with it, and I write down my reps. He also, um, excuse me, and then how many weeks that was I? And then I did the competition, and I did an analysis about what went right, what went wrong. Do I agree with overtraining to get results? Do I go by sets and certain times in the gym? Again, let me refer to my book here. 
Do I agree with overtraining to get results, or do I go by sets and certain times in the gym? I tend to go in there and like focus on either bench or squat. I do it that way. Sometimes I go in there and do like a, a circuit, just depending on what I'm doing. Sometimes it's just dependent upon. Um, <laughs> sometimes it's just dependent upon what equipment's available. So let's get to where I'm training. This was start of my training cycle for 2018, I believe. And just went in and did some general stuff. So it's pretty erratic. I'm not like a, not religious about doing all this kind of stuff. I didn't even train those weeks and still, still competed in October. So I guess it's more intuitive and what's available. And this last question, okay, I'm just going to have to read this because I'm lost. One hour, if you're traveling one hour, 50 miles per hour to reach 100 miles, how many hours will it take to reach 900 miles? If you're traveling an hour at 50 miles, you're going to go 50 miles in an hour. How, how are you going to reach 100 miles if you're going 50 miles an hour? Am I missing something? Do I need to go in the kitchen and do like, Applied math, baking. I think I'm just going to go in the kitchen and make some nachos. I can make some nachos. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching my video. Remember, it's free to like, subscribe, leave a comment, share this video if appropriate. Uh, if you want to play, let us know and tag us so that we can... Play, play this little game. It's kind of fun. It's just fun getting to know each other and doing something kind of personal that's not really going to help a lot of people every now and then. If you have time before you go, watch another video because YouTube likes for you to stick around. In the meantime, take care and let's just be friendly and nice and interested in one another. Bye.